Alright guys, so here we are at the airplane, we gotta step inside, step it up, uh, we've got about 15 minutes until departure and we need to get our asses into gear. So here I am in the cockpit and I'm gonna go straight up to the overhead and start my pre-flight pre flows. This is the first flight of the day in this airplane for me, so I'm just gonna start with my pre-flights here. Stall warning test. Flight recorder is checking fine, overspeed is fine, oxygen is sufficient for flight. We've got three landing gear indications over there. Just gonna do the pre-flows quickly here. Flaps are up, everything over here is guarded. Yaw damper is on, audio and instrument transfers are normal. We'll check the cross-feed valve and turn these fuel pumps off. Cross-feed valve is working fine. I'm gonna leave that fuel pump off uh, on for the APU because we are gonna be using APU power. Battery is looking good, 24 volts, no draw on it. Switches are fine, inverter is fine, APU is given 120 volts, 400 hertz, wonderful galley is on, everything over here is guarded, drive temp is on in. And the ground power here is off, obviously, because we're running on the APU. Instrument uh, equipment cooling is normal, fasten seat belts are coming on, wipers are fine, window heat's coming on, do a quick anti-ice test here on the wings. And it's looking fine. We don't need the hydraulics right now. We are pressurized and parking brake is set anyway. So we should be fine. Gonna set the temperature over here. Temperature is extremely hot right now. The airplane is almost 40 degrees. So we'll get both packs on to high and we'll have the airplane cool down as fast as we can before we start boarding the passengers. Cruise altitude today will be 34,000 feet. And landing will be at 10 feet, because we're going to San Francisco. Standby rate to normal, and we are at uh, 1,000, so we are 2,150 feet elevation. And this is normally you set to departure field minus 200 feet. So 1950 will be that. Pressurization is auto and in ground mode, and we'll check this panel over here. All the lights are off. Ignition is going to be over to the right. we got an even day, so right ignition. Position lights are on. Clear that message out. I'll do a quick light test. And all of these lights are looking good over here. Fine. Oh, everything's lighting up over here. Well, this light's not on. It should be. So it's probably broken. But we'll be fine. We don't need that. That's only a ground power indication. That's non critical for flight. Fine, 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 fine. Over here, check the MCP. And I can see all the digits. Both of these are illuminating. There's only three indications over here. This one does not show anything. Got two over here. This T bar over here. Very good. Auto brake. Check my gear config. I'm sorry, the takeoff configuration horn is fine. All of these lights are looking good. Audio panels are looking good, so all the lights I'm going to declare fine, and I want them on the bright setting. Ground proximity warning Stop. test, fire test, Wind overheats. Shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. Very Wind good. And Run fire detection is good. Oh Actually, okay. extinguishing fine. Okay, that's also a good TCAST test. Okay, it's passed. And I want this guy down at minus 20 feet. And I want this other guy over here on minus 20 feet as well, so that they're turned off. And I'm going to be talking on COM2 for now. Both sides. And because I'm going to be picking up clearance and everything over there. So with that out of the way, we'll listen to the ATIS. So let's refresh this page over here. Actually, I want to go to the flight route. In Las Vegas. Zero at one zero. Got to one. Visibility one zero. Sky clear below one two thousand. Temperature three six. Check density altitude. Yeah, it's extremely hot outside today. Four. Altimeter two nine or eight three. Visual Check my approach altimeter. runway one nine or left. One nine or right. Three. Two five left. In use. I need to set this guy already. Departing two nine runway one nine or left. One nine or right. Two five right. Read back all runway assignments. Yeah, we're we'll probably get runway 25 right for departure. All VFR departures, contact clearance delivery with your aircraft type, initial heading, and requested cruise altitude. Operate transponder with mode C on all taxiways and runways. Advise on initial contact you have Charlie. 
McCarran International Airport Information Charlie 1856 Zulu Wind 180 at 10 Cut to 1 Visibility 10 Okay, and we heard the rest there, so that's all fine Going to randomize the CFG here, center of gravity And then I'm going to load in what I have on my load sheet, which is 46.5 tons 46.5 is about there we're going to have 6,000 kilograms of fuel, 6046, so that's all fine. Actually, I'm going to load in one-tenth more. Okay, so we have ex additional sort of fuel for running the APU here on the ground, because we're going to be here for a little while. going to go down over here to the root, and we're going to uh, K-LAS, so Las Vegas, 2K... S F O and will be united eleven zero nine. Okay, hop over to the route. Departure is as I said probably gonna be on runway two five right and we'll be on the shed nine with a Keno transition. After that we will go direct Rusmi. And the arrival is gonna be on the Diamond two from Rusmi. I'm going to plan ILS 28 right, and it's going to go from Archie. We'll maybe get the visual, we'll see about that. Activate and execute that for now. Hop over here to the performance limitations or the performance setting. We are going to be 46.5 tons on the zero fuel weight. Our flight release says that our reserve is 2.3, actually 2270. We're going to be a fairly low cruise index, cost index today of only 5. We're going to be going slow because we got plenty of time. Cruise altitude is going to be 340. Cruise winds are on our top of climb point. It's going to be 260 at 41. Slash 41. And if you guys are wondering how this works, it's basically sort of like a wizard. You just click this button here until you sort of clear out all the fields and put in as much information as you can. And 7 degrees, top of climb, ISA deviation. Execute that performance change. Now I'm going to check my performance here, and I have top cat for that. So I have my 737-700 selector, because that's the only model that top cat comes with. And I'm going to be planning for 100 and, let's see, 16 or 17 people. 116. And I'm going to add additional cargo so that I match the payload. So we are at 12.1, we need 13.6. It's going to be, what, 2,500, 2,600. That's all fine. Now our 6046 is the fuel load. Taxi fuel today is going to be 363. And trip fuel is 2830. And we're going from KLAS to KSFO. Head over to the takeoff page. Departure is going to be on runway 25 right. Update the weather there. Headwind, yeah, crosswind 9 components. Uh, crosswind component 9 knots, which is fine. We are limited by RVA up to uh, 29 degrees of crosswind. So let's do an optimum computation. Flaps want takeoff, no derate. 41 degrees. Assume temperature. Yeah, we are extremely hot today. We'll see if we can even get a flaps 5 departure here. And we can. And I'm going to do flaps 5 here because that's usually what my VA recommends. So takeoff, no derate. And we'll do assume temperature 40 degrees. It does not exactly match up with what top get gives, but it's roughly, roughly about right. Okay. And for the takeoff page, fifth five degrees of flaps and 23.3 is going to be our center of gravity. I'll just accept the default V speeds here because those are fine. 32. 134 and 143. 3.2 units of trim. So I'm going to set that up over here. And 3.2 is about there. Just going to check the departure here and do a quick briefing. On runway 25 right, the shed 9 starts at an initial climb straight ahead to 2690. Actually, we got 2681 over here. But that's fine, close enough. 9 feet. I'm not going to sweat that. 
after that, 2-5 right is Arbel, then Roper, 7,000 feet below, so that's incorrectly coded, I need to correct that, 7,000 feet or below, it's between 6.5 and, and 7. Then we go Mad Dog at exactly 9,250 knots, that's fine, because we're below 10,000, then Tark at exactly 1,000, then Shed at 114 or above, after that, Debage 210 or above, Burke 210 or above, and then Keno is our final point on the transition. And then we're going to go straight up into the arrival, which is going to be the Diamond 2 from Rusmi, which goes Rusmi, then Diamond 270 or above, Lane between 220 and 260, which is again incorrectly coded. So I'll go slash flight level 260 or below. And 280 knots is correct there. Then always, no constraint, flows 190 or below between 14000 and flight level 190 or below. So FL190 or below. This should actually show up as FL190B so rather than like that, but that's fine. 280 knots is the correct constraints. Seats at 1, 2,000 or below. It's actually between 10 and 12. So I'm going to do that and I'll keep an eye on the 10,000 using my altimeter constraint, my, my MCP window there. Freely is 8,000 feet or above, 240 knots, and Archie is 7,230, but the, there's a no tem out for today, which says change the Archie constraint to 8,000. Other than that, that's looking pretty good, 230 knots, that's fine. I'm going to execute this, and we are pretty much ready for the pre-flight checklist here. Just going to check my oxygen over here, and check the co-pilot's oxygen as well. And he's fine. And I'm going to wind you over to page number one. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and do a pre-flight checklist. Oxygen was tested, instrument transfer switches are both on normal. Window heats are on, pressurization mode selector is auto and ground. Flight instruments. Heading on the left side is 123, 2983, indicating 2000, just shy of 2080 feet. 2983, and indicating just shy of 2000, about 50 feet, but the standby is kind of in inaccurate. 123 on the right, 2983, just shy of 2080. Flight instruments have been checked. Parking brake is set and engine start levers are on the cutoff position. Pre-flight checks are complete. Now we can, can go ahead and ask for clearance. I'm going to be tuning my radios over here for that. And I'm going to show you guys how I'm doing it. I have a radio panel. So these two are the radio stacks, left and right. And I'm going to be talking. I have my mic currently selected on mic number two. Clearance delivery is 118.18.0. And uh, then ground east of runway one right one nine one nine or left is one two one point one one two one point one checks out tower for runways two five right is one one nine point nine so that's going to go into the other radio here and the departure here on runway two five right calls for and I got to check out and bring up the right correct chart here because I don't have it up and we're gonna go shed 9 page number 2 runway 25 right departure frequency is 125.9 or not 126.9 or 125.9 or wonderful so that's all working well and our initial constraint so let's go ahead over here and go to the MCP our initial heading on the departure so first we'll set in V2, 143, so go over to my IAS mode. I'm going to use a side tack panel here, so that's why I'm not manipulating these physical switches, but it's essentially the same. It's just a physical, I like a physical switch a little bit better than uh, your regular stuff here and the VC. Heading is going to be initially 255. Altitude constraint on the departure is flight level 190, I think, but I'm going to check it again. Yes, it is. Flight level one nine or zero, unless we get any other constraints, but we'll probably get a climb via set from the controller. There, going to set in also a backup for ILS two five left into my 
Actually, it's already... Oh, not that one. I want the aft pedestal view. Yeah, 111.75 is already set in the backup uh, at the nav 1 radio. This is an RNAV arrival. I'm sorry, an RNAV departure, but uh, we'll be using this one in case we need to go around. That's ILS 25 left here back at Las Vegas in case we need to abort. Course is 255, which is fine. Okay, so with that out of the way, we can go ahead and ask for clearance. It's our time. Well, we should have departed about a minute ago, but we are good. Just going to do one more thing. I'm going to connect my VA connector here so that it's tracking my progress. Wonderful. We'll connect it and kind of call up for clearance now. Las Vegas clearance. Good afternoon. United 1109 IFR to San Francisco. And I hope we're connected. Yeah, 11 0 9 -er. Las Vegas Clearance, clear to San Francisco Airport, shed 9 departure, kennel transition. And that's filed, climb via SID, squawk 7327. Clear to San Francisco, shed 9 departure, kennel transition, then it's filed, climb via SID, squawk 7327, United 1109. Okay, 7327 is coming United over 11 here. 9 -er, read back right. 7327, and we can turn the transponder on. We'll get everything set up for our pushback. I'm going to switch over to ground frequency now. We are on gate Delta 39er. So we'll be pushing back and I'm going to show you using my broken ass pushback plug in here. And I'll just make a very simple pushback. Let's call up this guy. I want to push back about 80 meters. Well, maybe a little bit less than that. And we're going to go tail left. That'll put us, well, we're clear enough to start engines over here. Maybe do a little bit of a pull forward segment here, maybe 20 meters. Yeah, like that. That'll be fine. Okay, let's cycle the parking brake here just quickly to get the gate disconnected. And do a quick check over here. I'm going to turn on all the fuel pumps. Pack flow can go back to auto, and let's do it like that. Cabin is cooled down, wonderful. All is well, and we'll do the pre-flight, I'm sorry, actually the priest before start checklist. So cockpit door is closed and it's locked. Instrument uh, fuel is 3,000 in one, 3,000 in the other, so that's six tons, and the pumps are on. Passenger signs are on. Windows are locked right and locked left. MCP is 143. Heading is 255. Altimeter altitude is 190. Takeoff speeds 132. VR 134, V2 143. CD preflight is completed. Taxi and takeoff briefing is completed. Actually, we haven't done the taxi and takeoff briefing. We've only done the departure brief. So taxi brief, we are on the Delta gates. Uh, we'll be pushing back, then moving over to holding point to spot number seven, if I don't remember. Yeah, it's going to be spot right, number seven. Contact, so call approach one, four three, four point two. After that, we'll probably get a taxi on Charlie or Bravo down to runway 25, right? So it's going to be a left turn after our spot. Standard departure uh, procedure supply. we got a very long runway, 4,400 meters. Standard of abort procedures, so up to 80 knots for any problems, up to V1 only, major problems, engine fire, engine failure, predictive wind shear, or airplane not flyable. Standard reject procedure, which means retard throttle, uh, apply full manual braking, extend speed brakes by hand, and apply reverse thrust if available and required. Other than that, if, depart, if we depart, our minimum sector altitudes are going to be 13,000 in our direction of flight, so we will want to make a turn. If we make a, a left turn, that will keep us roughly on a departure, and we'll need to only maintain 8,400 there. Or if we stay over the city reasonably close to the field, within about 10 miles, we should be good. Yeah, for turn back, uh, I would... Uh, Turn over to left to Boulder City, and we have Boulder City VOR and the second nav radio already tuned in. So we can just track the second nav radio, which is over here. Other than that, we've already done the departure brief, so I would call that the uh, taxi and takeoff brief complete. 
an anti-collision light is going to be coming on. So anti-collision light is... No, that's not the right one. I want to hit the right one. There it is. Taxi and takeoff brief is complete. So I'll call for push. Ground to cockpit. Toe is connected and steering pin is inserted. Okay, the steering Release pin is inserted so we can pressurize hydraulics. And we got that going. We got that going. So let's get the brakes released. So I'll just depress the brakes and start my left timer. And startup order will be number one, then number two, which is standard at United. So I'll position both packs, which is two off. We got good starting pressure. So we'll start the left engine now. Right now we're clear the gate. Just gonna monitor. And two. Oil pressure. It's very good. And then one rotation is also observed. Twenty percent. And we'll for wait for twenty five. Twenty five per cent, start the clock. Looks like a good light off. Start a cut out. Took about twenty seconds. I'll start right engine. And two, the oil pressure rise, and the N1 rotation is observed as well, so engine is not seized. I'm just waiting for 20%, yes, so now we're being pulled forward. Twenty-five. Push back complete. Set parking brake. I got a cool start, it seems, as well. Starters cut out, and there we go, about 18 seconds on the other one as well. Okay, we got two good starts. Disconnect so from the toe, and we'll go over here to the after Fence start the items. Traffic, 12 o'clock, four miles opposite direction, out to the case 5,500, type on. Generators are online, continuous over here. I'm going to start the timer for the APU shutdown. Oh, there we go. That guy, that guy, that. And I'm going to take weather, weather, and actually I'm going to take terrain on my left side. And flight controls check. Pull back, full forward. Ailerons, we could actually, should be able to see them. Uh, not quite, they're a little bit uh, too far out. And rudder. And there we go. And the before taxi checklist. Okay, generators are both on, pitot heats are on, anti-ice won't be required, isolation valve is auto, engine start switchers are continuous, recall we checked already, but I'm going to check it again, auto brake is RTO, engine start rollers are on the idle tent, flight controls have been checked, and flaps are set fire with a green light before taxi checks are complete. So I'm going to taxi up a little bit closer to the whole short line before I call up ground there. So we got clear on the left and the right. I'm going to turn on but all uh, these lights make sure that we're seen. And I know what I wanted to do before we start moving. I wanted to set my speed bugs because I always only stare at this instrument over here. I never really check the digital one. So we got f 143 plus 15, 140, 158. That'll be our flaps one retraction. Laps up will be at 190, minimum clean is 210. 
Okie doke. So, clear right and left. Let's get going. Come on, come on, baby, let's break free. Oh, she's really not very happy about pulling today. Got two minutes on the APU cooldown, so we can reset that. And Las Vegas ground, unit 1109 or spot 7 with information, Charlie, request taxi. United 1109 or Las Vegas ground, safe, safe position. United 1109 is on spot 7, which be Charlie 5. Uh, United 1109, yeah, it's spots, I'm familiar with spots, so I just didn't copy. Uh, runway 19 or left, taxi via Charlie, Bra, uh, correction, Charlie Gulf Delta. I'd like to request the runway 25 right if you have it available, United 1109. United 1109, runway 25 right is available, runway 25 right, taxi at Charlie Bravo, wind 180 at uh, 10 gust 21. 25 right, Charlie Bravo, United 1109. Yeah, he's given me the wind to warn me that there's a gust and crosswind, but we're fine up until 29 knots, so no problem. Okay, Charlie is over here to the left, and I'd call that we're pretty clear of the terminal area here, so we can turn on the auto throttle. So nothing much has changed on our departure. We kind of requested what we wanted to do anyway, so that's fine. So they're going to give us whatever you ask for. Santa Maria Tower, Piper, it's going to be a high power one takeoff. Up 31401, Santa Maria Tower, runway 1 2. Going to get a good roar out of the engines. 2 8 0 tap. Clear to land. I'm going to take a sip of my tea here. We got speeding a little bit. We want to go now faster than 20 knots on the ground. Oh, we can do a bleeds on takeoff, no problem. We still got performance reserves up the wazoo. Really only limited by temperature. And we're speeding up a little bit too much. We got some tailwind apparently. While we're going down a hill here. I need to slow down a little bit using the brakes. Don't want to overuse them a bit too much, though. Gotta keep, gotta keep a lookout for other traffic. Yeah, so nothing has changed. Standard rejects have not changed. Standard departure route has not changed either. So everything we've briefed is still valid. And so while I'm actually taxiing here, I usually uh, try to maintain the center line using just the pedals. I do have a separate tiller, which is a lot more, which gives me a lot more deflection. Wow, this thing is speeding up like crazy. But the VA does not allow us to use reverse thrust for maintaining speed, so that's fine. Okay, coming up onto the whole short line in a moment. So we're gonna start ourselves on the taxi checks here. Turn on the yoke handfully. Helpfully. So, flight controls have been checked. Flaps are 5 with a green light. Trim is set to 3.2 units. And we got 0 okay, ailerons so approach, one, three, and five, 0 one, on the rudder. And we'll take the cabin report here in just a sec. We'll ding the cabin and we'll consider that our cabin report. I'd call that the cabin report received. Here's the Bravo hold short line. And camera report received. Wonderful, let's go talk to Tower. Radio 1. Las Vegas Tower, United 1109, short of 25 right on Bravo, ready for departure. 
Eleven zero nine or Las Vegas Tower, wind one eight zero one zero gust two one runway two five right clip takeoff. Two five right clip for takeoff, unit eleven zero nine. Okay, approach sector is clear. Gonna turn on the strobes here. And the runway appears clear as far as I approach can see. Approach sector two five right. Thank you, Betty. Landing lights on. You wanted to roll down like crazy, and now you don't want to get going, huh? Classic. On runway, two, five, right. Okay. Start my timer here. And there we go. Take off. Very good. Toga. And we're auto throttle. I can feel the crosswind, gonna give it a little bit of left wing. My yoke is about 60 degrees deflected to the left. And there's 80 knots. Wow, the Gusting crosswind is no fun. And there's V1 and rotation. Whoop. Positive right and gears coming up. That was not a very pretty departure. Yeah, 1109er, can I take the part? Order to depart to United 1109 And it's just maintaining that now. There we go, 400 feet above. L nav. Switch over to departure. On my radio panel here. Las Vegas departure, United 1109 or passing 3000, climbing with the SID. Yeah, 1109 Las Vegas departure, ready to contact the lead officer restriction at Rope. Delay out to true restriction at rope, United 1109er. Okay, and I'm gonna turn on the autopilot. And we can go flaps one. Now oh, these guys can't go away. And 190 knots, flaps up. Gear is going to be coming to off, but it's blocked by my handle here, my physical lever. And the after takeoff checklist. Pressurization is checked. Gear is up and off, flaps are up, no lights. After takeoff checklist complete. Okay, and we want to delete the restriction at Roper. So I'm going to go delete. Actually, you know, the easiest way to delete that restriction is to just go ahead and hit level change. You know, 1109 equipped direct shed, climb maintain fall level 190. Clear direct shed, climb maintain 190, unit 1109. Very nice, so we'll go like that. Unit 1109, disregard that for now. Uh, continue climbing via the sit. I'll have that for you about another thousand feet. Okay, continuing back over to Roper and United Limits around her. It's a good thing we didn't execute the change there. So it wants to give me a little bit of a shortcut there. We are in level change, heading 193, climbing 190. And delete the altitude restriction at Roper so we can go straight up pretty much. Only 9,000 9, for now. Because we need to be constrained at Mad Dog, which is 9,000. 
So we'll still be climbing the inset. Expect for the clearance two zero one five. Time now one nine or five one and one quarter. United 11 direct shed, climb maintain 5 one Direct shed, climb maintain 1 0 United 11 Okay, I'm gonna take a right here manual with the heading first. And then I'm gonna be programming that into the FMC. Just do heading select and the climb there. there. Ten thousand and we can accelerate up to two eighty eight. So now setting the IIS so two eighty eight. And we'll take a direct to shed. go. Now we can re-engage LNAV and also VNAV. That's it pretty much for the departure. After shed I'm going to be turning off the landing lights and turning off the cabin signs. Actually landing lights at United Policies up to 18,000 feet. And after the turn there, I'm going to turn off the cabin signs so people can move about. But yeah, the departure was ugly. All my fault, of course. And I expect probably the next sector is going to be 13355, Los Angeles Center for the upper sector. But we'll see about that. I'm going to pre tune that. Yeah, on 29 knots of headwind here, pretty much, so that's expected. Looking Compressor over here. Six Bravo, SoCal approach, flying one yeah, seven zero. Pretty much out of there. there. Join the runway two zero right localizer. Expect visual approach runway two zero right. Altimeter is two nine nine nine. Just adjusting my screen here. You know, eleven zero nine contact Los Angeles Center one three three point five five. Thirty three fifty five. You landed eleven zero nine. Ha! Guessed it. Los Angeles Center, Unit 1109 are passing 15000 for flight level 1 air 0. And direct chat. 1109 are Los Angeles Center, climb maintain 340. Climb maintain 340, Unit 1109 are. Air 6 Tango Bravo, from here, field in sight, uh, 1 o'clock. There we go. Three. So I've set in the new altitude there on my MCP. I'm going to take my range here a little Bravo bit clear, further. Clear, visual approach, runway 20 right, contact John Wayne Tower on uh, 5 mile final, 126. Yeah, that's about it. We'll check if the we could conceivably go up to three six zero. We'll see about the performance. Maybe I'll request it. I usually don't want to climb too high. I don't want to be trying for too high a cruise level here at us uh, Las Vegas because the temperature is just so brutal here on the climb. It's just so hot. 36 degrees there at the ground level and I've flown out of here at over 40 degrees C which is pretty bad okay one seven thousand seven hundred eight hundred I'm gonna call that transition altitude so that I can get all the temp all these guys set up in time two nine around or two checks out landing lights can come off and after the turn from shed on shed, we'll take the landing, the cabin signs off.
Yeah, and that's pretty much it there. That's all there is to the departure there. Eight minutes in the air. Fortunately, we got an unrestricted climb pretty much, even with a shortcut, which is always great. Yeah, the temperate, the normally you, when you get like lots of altitude restrictions, you gotta level off and then you gotta fly straight for a little bit and continue climbing and everything. It's just a drag on fuel consumption. 20,000. Coming up on the right turn here in just a sec. There it goes. Let's jump over here to the other seat. Gotta realign my heading here. My heading bug. Like that. Just that's just in case I need to engage heading hold. There's no other reason for that. And there we go. And I'd say that's a pretty good reason to turn off the fasten seatbelt signs now. Los Angeles Center Unit 1109 would like to request an amendment to our cruise to flight level 360. Yeah, 1109, climb maintain 360. Climb maintain 360, appreciate it, Unit 1109. Okay, 360 is all approved. So let's go 360 over there. Gotta go 360 over here. And yeah, it's gonna change the cabin climb rate pretty drastically. And meanwhile, we also wanna go over here and check our 360 is gonna be standby pressurization of 7,600 in case the automatics fail. 7,600. So that's set in, and we're going to go down over here into our performance, change cruise to 360. And she should light up, there we go, and I just get the stuttering when I change anything on my performance. There we go, about 22 miles away from top of climb to flight level 360. 